Hey folks, David Frost, MyStrategicForecast.com. You're here for another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis on Thursday, December 18, 2014. What a day it was today. What a rally. Unbelievable. It was epic. It was monster. The major indexes were up over 2%, uh, S&P 2.4%, Dow 2.4%, NASDAQ 2.25%. Uh, it was just pretty unbelievable. So um, who would have thought that we would get all the way up to the level, the maximum level I told you about last night in two days? Um, I didn't think so. Nobody under the sun thought so, but it happened. And what you're seeing here, you see this um, <clears throat> this big tail. That Remember I talked about that uh, either a day or two ago, and I talked about fake prints, and um, here's another one. And sometimes what happens with these, and look where this is going, all the way up to 213. So that would coincide with 2130 in the S&P. And uh, sometimes that acts as somewhat of a tell of where the market may be going in the future. How long in the future? Nah, it's hard to tell. It's not necessarily the next day, but it, it could be possibly by the end of the year, it could be in early January, or it could just disappear and it could never happen. So um, we'll see what happens, but it's just something to keep uh, kind of in your notepad. And uh, if we continue to move up and we break above the highs, then I want to take note of that 213 because there's a chance that we can get there. But we'll see, play it one day at a time, like we always do. But uh, to get up to this level in two trading days, basically, look what ha look what happened. From the low, okay, now I, I remember I told you the low was going to be uh, maximum, I thought would be about um, 196.72, uh, I think the number was here, 196.73, and we came within a stone's throw of that, and then all of a sudden we find ourselves at 207 and change today. That is quite a move. I mean, that's uh, that's ridiculous, actually. So, um, you know, nothing moves in a straight line except the last two days. So I would expect uh, somewhat of a pullback, not necessarily tomorrow. Tomorrow is options expiration, and you actually have um, all the asset classes expiring tomorrow, and it's called quadruple witching options expiration. So everything expires. Uh, you have stocks, you have indexes, quarterly options, monthly options, everything's expiring tomorrow. Weekly options, monthly options. Um, so, so basically, um, you're going to have some whipsaw primarily in the beginning of the day and at the end of the day. And what happens tomorrow is, um, and I don't know this for a fact, but tomorrow you may start higher in the morning, you may pull back, and then you may float around for the remainder of the day and, and possibly, like we normally do on Friday, push up at the end of the day. Although last Friday was a down Friday, but that was somewhat of an anomaly because we've only had a handful of down Fridays all year long. I think, I'm sure there's less than 10 down Fridays all year long. So that's also something to note. Um, but normally Friday the volume dries up, but you will have some uh, volume in the morning and then some volume at the end of the day, the last uh, you know half an hour or so. But in between, uh, I would expect just some back and forth choppiness going on and not much more than that. But um, next week you'll probably see uh, you know some some choppiness up and down action, but the volume's going to dry up. And when the volume dries up, the market has a tendency to float higher. So I wouldn't necessarily necessarily look for any shorts in this market over in between now and the end of the year um, what I would do is I'm going to be looking for stocks that are have a good setup to pop higher I'm not really interested in shorting unless the character of the market changes but I'm not interested in shorting um, into the end of the year because of the light volume the holiday seasonality period all that stuff that I've been talking about so um, that's where we stand in the major markets now, we had good volume today. We had uh, 257 million shares. Yesterday was 254, almost 254 million shares. So that's heavy, heavy volume. Basically, what you had today was you had uh, some short covering, you had some institutional buying, and then you also had some panic buying. And, and that coincides with the short covering. So, um, but what I want to point out is um, the IWM which was interesting. The IWM was only up about 1.7% today. And um, 
That's less than the S&P, less than the Dow. And remember, I always tell you that the uh, IWM is a leader on the upside, leader on the downside. Now, I'm not suggesting there's downside coming tomorrow or next week or anything like that, anything significant anyway. But what I am saying is it, it is a little odd that the volume was less than yesterday in the IWM. We had 54 million shares today. Uh, and then yesterday we had 70 million shares. That's a big deal. So... Um, what what I suspect is that um, we probably will over the next few days see somewhat of a pullback to work off some of this now what seems to be an overbought condition right two days up like we just had is uh, is prime for somewhat of a pullback but I don't I don't think a big pullbacks coming and by the way remember I told you this was somewhat of a bullish pattern all this sideways uh, action going on for the last um, let's say uh, month and a half and here you go you popped up and you took out the high here today and you finished above it so therefore I think we're gonna at least challenge the 120 area and then we'll see where we go from there and if the S&P is gonna move higher towards that fake print then the then the IWM will certainly move higher also but we'll play it one day at a time it's just something to note that the IWM on a day like today was weaker than the S&P and the Dow so it's just something that I like to put in my notepad and take note of it and see see where we go from here so what else do I have in my notes alright let's talk about energy a little bit um, you know the USO or oil today crude oil was uh it was it was up in the morning and then it was weak and a lot of the energy stocks were even down today um and so what that's telling us is that oil probably hasn't found the ultimate low yet that's going to hold for a while and where that ultimate low can be at this stage of the game since oil right now is trading uh south of 55 um, I believe that we're probably going to see 50 and my my number that I've calculated is actually 48. So I wouldn't be surprised to see oil, crude oil go down to $48 and maybe we'll find a low there. We'll see. Don't know when that's going to happen, uh, but if oil remains weak, it's certainly going to work lower. But what you've seen is you see last week when the market was selling off, you had oil selling off and the market down got blamed uh, or oil got blamed on the market right so every time crude oil would go down and the market would go down they were blaming it on oil and Russia that was the two catalysts last week and then now oil is still weak and the markets rallying so um, what that's telling you and what I told you I think it was last night or the night before was that 80 85 percent of America okay wants lower oil prices okay you and I benefit from lower oil prices if you have to fill up your car with gas it's going to be cheaper as a result of lower oil prices if you have to heat your home it's going to be cheaper this winter as a result of lower oil prices and when it's cheaper for us that's more money that we can deploy or spend elsewhere so that's a positive for the consumer and it's a positive for businesses because businesses certainly use energy if they have trucks out there and they're filling up the trucks you know take Walmart for example how much how much gas do you think Walmart uh, uses on a daily basis in trucks going back and forth across the country from their distribution centers to the stores an enormous amount how about FedEx how about UPS how about any company that has to power buildings and plants and all that stuff that's energy lower energy prices goes right to their bottom line so Businesses benefit from lower energy prices. Consumers benefit from lower energy prices. Who doesn't benefit from lower energy prices? Basically, energy companies and investors that have energy stocks or oil in their portfolios. Those are the only two uh, entities I can think of that don't benefit from lower energy prices. So... Um, while we we heard that lower oil prices were taking down the market, I told you not to believe that. It's nonsense. And guess what? It's nonsense. So don't listen to the talking heads. I keep telling you that. Uh, they're fun to listen to in terms of what they're saying because I just laugh at them and uh, because they change day to day based on what's happening. They, they have no idea what they're talking about. They just take what's happening today and they say that's the reason. It's not the reason. It just happens to be happening today. So um, anyway... So lower oil prices are good for basically almost everybody. However, 
there are some of these MLPs that we've been discussing and some of the uh, smaller energy exploration companies that have taken out large loans and they became leveraged and they have to pay back those loans. And they can't pay back those loans with lower oil prices because they can't make a profit selling the oil at $55 a barrel when they were selling it at 85 or 90 just a few months ago. So those companies are in trouble and that's why, remember I showed you the... Uh, I showed you the JNK, okay, the junk bond index, and the JNK was selling off because a lot of those companies are, are junk status in terms of their borrowing and their debt ratings. And when, when the fear is that some of them aren't going to be able to pay back those loans, specifically in the energy sector, um, the junk bonds sell off. And that's as a result that you can see that happening here. And then the junk bond index is now moving with the market. And uh, it'll inflate with the market. As long as the market moves higher right now, the junk bond index will move higher. And guess what? When you see it roll over again, let's say it gets down uh, up to here, here about 39 it should stall out and then it'll certainly stall out for a while if we get past there at the 50 period moving average which is this blue line and if it rolls over again we're probably going to have a replay of what we just saw last week but I don't expect that to happen until January at the earliest and um, you know there's plenty of time and we'll let you know when we see that okay uh, last thing I want to talk about tonight is gold and let's take a look at the GLD and last night I told you that yesterday was a daily bottom on my uh, cycle work for gold a uh, daily cycle which is a shorter term cycle okay and what happened overnight gold hit um, the gold futures contract hit uh, 1188 I believe it was and uh, in fact let me let me take a look I'm looking at another chart and another screen just give me a second here and I'm going over to the daily chart and I just want to get the number since I mentioned it I want to make sure I'm right um, okay so here we go oh, now my screen locked up here we, okay here we go amazing under pressure my screen locks up can you imagine that well I'm pretty sure it was 1188 or 11850 anyway so what happened is early today we hit 212 or 213 and uh, that was a pretty good move from 1188 and remember I told you it's not out of the ordinary for gold to move up uh, $20 uh, $30 $40 here I got the low it's uh yeah, I think it was 1188. Okay, so it moved up uh, from 1188 overnight into early today was um, 12, 12, 12, 13. That's a pretty good move off that bottom. And then we pulled back, and now in the uh, Globex session, as I make this video, we're right at about 1200 again. Um, and so we'll we'll see what happens. We'll see if we get some follow through on the upside in gold. Um, and we can get a few more days of an up move. I hope the I hope it wasn't a one day wonder, but we'll see where it takes us. And uh, you know, you know, I'm looking for higher prices on gold into next year. This is still a bullish pattern. We have a low, higher low, higher low, higher low. That's a bullish pattern. So we want to see that follow through. But we it may take a while. It may take several days, and it may take uh, another couple of weeks. But once we see gold start to move higher, we should get uh, th we should get up to this 118, 119 level, and then we should get up to this 120, 120 and a half level, and then hopefully we can get up to this uh, we'll call it 122, where this 20 period moving uh, this is the 200 period moving average, and that's a pretty good move from where we are now. Right now, 115, 115 and a half up to 122. That's a nice little move in the GLD. And make no mistake about it, if we start to move up there, the gold mining stocks will go with it. And they've actually been moving a, li a little bit better than the price of gold. And uh, last thing I'll talk about is those. Uh, GDX put in an update today. And um, you can see GDX moving up kind of with the market a little bit. But it's moving better than gold. And sometimes they tend to move prior to the move in the spot gold price the gold miners will move in anticipation that gold is going to go higher and since gold's going to go higher the gold miners uh, will have more profitability and that's why they'll move higher and they've been basically in the basement uh, I mean some of those stocks are down in single digits that used to be thirty forty dollars uh, a few years ago so um, if you want to bottom fish some of those that's fine I'm not ready to pick them up yet but uh, when I do I'll certainly let the subscribers and the members know about it I think that's about it for tonight. Hopefully this is helpful. I'm David Frost, MyStrategicForecast.com. Thanks for tuning in for another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis.
analysis.